Now, Shannon, I'm assuming you've got a problem with this? Of course I do. I have a huge problem with it. A huge problem? Yes, I do. I Skip, love this. Because when you look at it, Skip, there's nothing that Ben Simmons... There's nothing that Ben Simmons does offensively that's better than anything. Even the worst thing that Russ does at three point, which is three point shooting, Ben Simmons is worse than Russ. So if we still look at scoring, is Ben Simmons better than Russell Westbrook at scoring? No. Is he better at passing? No. Is he better at uh, shooting? No. Is he better at rebounding? Russell Westbrook is six foot three inches tall. Ben Simmons is 6'10, 6'11. Mm. Is he a better rebounder than Russ? Absolutely not. Skip, this is a, and we, we talk about this all the time, and I know I've mentioned it a lot, and people are probably tired of me mentioning it. Pro sports is about updating your resume. Mm. Ben Simmons, first year in the league, he was 16, 8, and 8. 16 points, 8 rebounds, 8 assists. Last year, he was 14, 7, and 7. So, instead of improving in statistical categories, he's regressing. Mm -mm. So, I'm trying to figure out how do you get that? You say, well, you know what, Shannon? On the defensive end, mm. Ben Simmons is a monster. Mm. Is Ben Simmons more dominant on the offensive end than Russell uh, Westbrook is on the on the offensive end? Mm -hmm. I don't believe he is. I don't believe Ben Simmons mm -hmm. is a more dominant defensive player than a force of Russ is on the offensive end. Skip, I, 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 I'm, I'm baffled by this. And I think the thing, what we're starting to see is that we keep, everybody sees the potential and what Ben Simmons can be. What someone can be and what they actually are are two entirely different things. We've seen guys. Man, this joker's so talented. Ooh, he has all the talent. He can run, jump, catch. He can do everything. Okay, well, so when is he going to do it? Mm. Ben Simmons is 6'10", six 6'11". Foot six foot mm. He has all the tools. Yes, he can dribble the basketball. Yes, he can facilitate the offense. He can rebound. He can assist. But, Skip, when is that talent, when is that gonna, all that going to meet the potential, mm. manifest itself on the court, and we see the finished product, and we say, well, God, God. Mm. There's a difference. When we look at Kevin Durant, if Kevin Durant was just seven foot tall and he wasn't, didn't, wouldn't do what he what he's capable of doing, we're like, man, KD has it all. He's seven foot tall. He can do this. He can do that. He does that. Mm. There have been a lot of seven foot tall guys. Dirk was seven foot, but he couldn't do what KD does. Mm. There are a lot of guys shorter, but they can't do what KD. So mm. that's what makes him unique. There are a lot of guys that can't shoot in the NBA. Mm. <laughs> that's not unique to being. But when you got a guy that's six foot ten, that's supposed to be a superstar, mm. and he's so limited offensively, Skip, I don't know how you become a superstar if you're so limited on the offensive end. And not everybody want to talk about defense, but you're in an offensive league now. Mm. Defense doesn't carry the same weight. Now you have to play some defense, but it doesn't carry the weight like it did in the '80s, in the '90s, when teams were really defense, defensive oriented. Skip, and you saw 73, 75 ball games. 80, 79 ball games. Now you don't see that. So I have a huge problem with Russell Westbrook being ranked behind mm. Ben Simmons. Shannon Sharp, I have been trying to tell you this validates what I have been trying to get through your stubborn head. How? Here's the point. Russell Westbrook, your new point guard of your Los Angeles Lakers, has always been supremely overrated as a winning basketball player. It is why Kevin Durant finally said, I can't take it anymore. I got to go win me a ring, so I'll join forces with that team. And I'll be the finals MVP back-to-back -back years. Ben Simmons has always been, as I've tried to explain to you, subtly underrated as a winning basketball player because he can do so much in the box score that is subtle, not easily grasped. And I realize he's got free throw demons right now. Oh, yeah, and it, yeah, it, yeah. It, it obviously cost them down the stretch. Yeah. Tell that to the Sixers fans. Okay. he got untapped potential. Okay, well, let's, let's go back quickly to that game seven, okay. shall we? Here we shall. Ben Simmons has been back-to-back -back first team all defense in the NBA. Mm -hmm. And it manifests itself live and in sort of hidden sight, if you will, in that game seven, because all the post-game focus went on. He turned down the shot because he didn't want to shoot the free throws. Yeah. And meanwhile, what was happening to Trey Young? Little tiny mice Trey, as I call him. What was happening? Ben Simmons was doing a number on him in game seven at six feet, 10 inches. 
He enveloped him. He suffocated little Maestre and Bernie. held him to five of 23 from the field and two of 11 from three. And that should have been good enough to win that game. Because meanwhile, Ben Simmons did give you eight rebounds. And guess what else he gave you? He gave you 13 assists. And you want to talk about a fast break initiator, a, a, an igniter of the fast break? Who is the fastest player in the league with the ball in his hands on the break? Russ. It is not close to Russ. Russ. It is Ben Simmons at 6'10". Mm -hmm. You can go look at the analytics. Lonzo's up in the, the discussion and debate also. But it is Ben Simmons. He is freakishly fast with the ball in his hands leading the break. And he is a gifted passer. He's a far more gifted passer than Russell West's break yeah, is. But, but the question is, okay, yes, he has more gifts. Mm -hmm. But what good are gifts if you can't use them, if you're not, if you don't have them on display? Okay, and furthermore, I'm going to finish on game seven because we know what happened after the game. We're going to talk about exactly what Doc did or didn't <laughs> say after the game. We'll talk about that in a little while okay. because he might be doing a little damage control, a little spin control, right. or he might be telling some truth there, but we'll get into that. Okay. Ben Simmons just flat, I mean, uh, uh, Joel and B just flat out threw Ben right under the bus yeah. after the game. And yet, I look at the box score now and I just now realize, wait a second. Joel Embiid had a nice game, but he had eight turnovers. Did yeah. that cost them? That's eight. That's, that's a lot of turnovers. Yes. So I look at plus minus in this game seven at home. They should have won it. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at all the players who played significant minutes in this game and only one has a plus. Ben Simmons has a plus one because he subtly is very effective as a winning basketball player. Embiid was a minus two. Tobias was a minus six. Seth Curry was a minus two. George Hill was a minus 15. And Thibault was a minus 10. Ben Simmons was a plus one in that game. And I think that was significant because he was doing good things except for running from the free throw line at the end of the game. But, but Skip, you, what you're doing is that you're focusing on one game. I'm talking about the totality of oh, the season. I, I'd love if to you talk look about at, that. Look at Russ's okay. numbers. Okay. Who was the one seed last year in the East. Was it your guy in Milwaukee? Was it Giannis? No, no it wasn't Giannis. Was it Maestre's team? No, it wasn't Maestre's team. We could go on and on. Who else in the East did you? Oh, it was Philadelphia. Right. And, and was that because Ben Simmons was probably the most effective and valuable player on that team? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I've noticed you mentioned game seven. But mentioned one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. How did he do in those games? Well, they did win three of them. Yeah, right? but hold on. You're the number one seed. You just talked about how great the number one seed was. You lost to a lower seed. Mm. As a matter of fact, that was the eighth seed mm. that you that beat you. And in 2019, it took the luckiest shot in the history of playoff basketball to keep this team from rising into the conference finals. Still, no, right? no, no, no. This is this is a 2021 ranking. Mm. We're talking about right now. Okay. And there's no way. I don't know how you come. And the NC skip again. People keep basing it on talent. Talent. What about performance? He had, Russ averaged, averaged more points, more rebounds, more assists. And the mm. one thing we know, maybe to his fault, Russ is never afraid. He like bone crushing and killing by. He never scared. You got that right. Yo, guys, skip. You guys get he on the basketball court. And he's scared to shoot. Mm. Really? Mm. So. I wish that Russ was a little more scared to shoot because he has proven over 13 years in this league to simply be the single worst superstar jump shooter in the history of professional ben basketball. Ben Simmons hold my beer. Okay, well, he doesn't even try to shoot. Okay. Russ, Russ is a high-volume three-point shooter, and if I look at since he came into the league, 246 players have attempted over that 13-year span at least three threes a game, yeah. and he ranks, of the 246, third from the bottom. It's just Josh Jackson and Baron Davis are below him. That's horrendously bad, especially when you couple it with the fact that he's become worse and worse at the free throw line. He's got his own demons. It Two of the worse. last three years, he shot 66% from the free throw line, and he's a point guard, well, right? The best your guy have ever shot is 61%. Okay, well, he's this this guy's tumbling all the way into the middle 60s, which is pretty frightening. Well, when, when is your guy going to tumble up? When okay. is your guy going to get to 70? Well, I'm, I'm starting to wonder... <sighs> When is LeBron going to just tumble off the cliff uh, at the end of the year? Because he's going to say, how can I rise no, above no. a guy who has led the league in turnovers four times and been second four times, has led the league in usage rate four times and been second yeah. four times? He demands the ball, has to have the ball in his hands because he is a solo act. Yeah. This is classically the most selfish player in basketball versus the most unselfish player is that number 25 for Philadelphia. 
Skip. Who's still only 25 years he's old. He's only 25. And I'm not saying Ben Simmons is a bad basketball player. All I'm saying is that I don't believe he's better than Russ is currently. Now, what he might become in two, three years, but what we've seen he, over the last four since they've both been in the league, he's never had more rebounds, points, or assists than Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook is six foot three. He's six foot ten. And that contributes to what? Winning or losing? Hold on. Mostly losing. Hold on. How many rings Ben Simmons got? Mm. Well, He's still only 25 years of age. I I'll give him a much better shot at winning a ring than Russ. With who? With Philly. That's where he's going to stay. And they, There's no way they should trade him. Oh, well, no, you said they shouldn't, but I'm telling you they are. But hold on, Skip. You said uh, 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 Joel B threw him under the bus. He did. But who was driving that bus? Doc Rivers. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about that a little later. Skip, all I'm saying is I don't know, understand. I thought the objective was to progressively get better. Mm -hmm. His numbers have declined. I, I know, but it's it's so ironic and amusing to me that people say Ben needs to shoot threes, attempt threes, and I'm saying Russ needs to quit shooting threes. Well, how about shooting he's, the basketball, he's a, period? He's a career 31% three-point shooter. Last year, he was even a tick better at 32%, and guess what that ranked? 150th of 156 qualified three-point shooters well, in the league. Well, guess who? You well, like that? Guess who was 157 of 156? Well, he doesn't try. Uh -huh, well, uh, and and when you don't, what you don't try doesn't hurt your team. Yes, it does. Well, no, it does not. Skip, because you're playing five Oh, I don't think so, because he can drive it just the way Russ can drive. He can be just as effective. One night with, with no uh, Joel Embiid in the game, I watched at Utah. I started watching it. I couldn't quit watching it on February 13th of this past season. Yeah. And all I saw Ben do was score 42 in that game. How can he do but that see, if you, you can't shoot? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. How can you do that? Hey, but, and, and he was just taking it right to Rudy Gobert. No, no, stop that. He, he, was ten, he was, first of all, I need you to stop telling this story because Rudy Gobert and Derek Favors and one other guy, he was 6 of 17 on them. Mm -hmm. He was 10 for 10 against Bogdanovich. Mm -hmm. So the, the majority of his numbers came. But I know, again, will you see what you did? You isolated one game. I didn't know the NBA season was one game. I mm -hmm. thought it was a 72 games this past season. Guess what he made from the free throw line that night? 12 of 13? You don't think he can shoot free throws? Yes, he can. Well, if he made, if he was 12 or 13 and he somehow ended the season at 61%, what the hell was he the other games? Mm. I've told you from the start, my only issue with Ben Simmons is I wish I could pour just a little bit of Russ into him intangibly well, you can't. because he is low motor. He seems to have low passion. I wish I could see a little bit more fury in his game, just yes. a little more rage. Russ plays with rage not to win, but to star. Re he wants to star. He, plays he wants to, to win. stat star. Still. That's all. He, he realized five years ago, wait a second. Oh, if I keep driving it and then I just leave it on the floor for Stephen Adams to dunk, I, I get no, assists. No, I, th I think Russ came to the realization. Russ, like, they left me for dead. Everybody's saying that I was, I was dependent on Kevin Durant, that everything I am was because of KD. I'm going to show you that I, can, I am a damn good basketball ball player minus KD. Yes, KD made us a championship-caliber team, but just because KD is not here, that doesn't mean I cannot thrive. I cannot succeed. Mm. And what did he do? He went out and averaged a 30-point triple-double. And he's been averaging those. And, and where did that get Oklahoma City? Skip. No. Oh, Skip. Only one team can win the title mm. every year. So if we look at it in that, so no matter what somebody does. So what did, what did KD 49, 17, and 10 get him? Nothing. Well, well, he, Nothing. Was, he became a solo act like Russ, except he's a way better solo act than but, Russ but because what? he took it right to the brink. And if he didn't have one toenail over the three-point line, we'd be having a real different conversation right now because you wouldn't be driving the Giannis bandwagon. No, but even, even though Kevin and Kevin ran is spectacular, they closed the curtain on his tent. Mm. His tent got folded up and put away until the, until later this fall. After he delivered two of the great playoff masterpiece games we've ever seen we won't in five and seven. Yeah, I've never lot, seen anything yeah, like it I before. have. I've seen it before. I've seen a lot of teams lose in the playoffs. That's what happens. That's mm -hmm. why you have one champion. But back to our originally scheduled mm -hmm. program and our topic is Ben Simmons. Mm -hmm. 14 points, seven rebounds, seven assists versus a guy that's 22, 11, and 11. Okay. For his career, Ben Simmons is 16, 8, and 8. That's winning basketball because the turnovers what they are low. What the turnovers they won? are low. And you as, keep telling me that's as, winning basketball. As, what did they want? As Doc said yesterday, he gets so many players, so many open shots. Yeah. That's not what What Russ about does. himself? 
Huh? What about himself? Well, Hell, I'm not finna feed 5,000 if I don't eat myself. How do you score 42 a game in, in a game no, no, if you're not in, capable? Skip, Skip, again, we're not arguing. We, we, I think we're, we're like two cars passing on the same road. I'm not saying that he's not talented. Mm. He, obviously, he's the number one overall pick. He's six foot ten. He can handle the ball. He, he can, can rebound run with the ball. He man. can de he can defend. Yep. But at some point in time, that needs to manifest itself on the court. Rookie of the year. Then next year, all star, all star. Last year, all star. So three straight all stars. Two straight defensive. Skip, first team all skip. defense. Russ has been an all star. First team. Russ wow. has been an all star ten straight times. Right. And he's since, been all NBA. Since, he's been an MVP. So what's better? Russ has been an MVP. So, we, solo act. Are we going to forget about that? Since KD left, Russ is 8-21 in yeah. playoff games. 8-21, and, and now he's your point guard. Skip. You getting scared? Skip. No, skip. You no, starting I'm... to shake? Skip. Listen, this guy is, he is hell on wheels, literally, skip. because it can go to hell in, in a second. But that normally happens when a great player leaves a team. That normally happens. That, that's not a surprise that when KD left, I mean, look what happened to Cleveland when LeBron left. Look what happened to Miami when LeBron left Miami. Mm. They still had D-Wade and Chris Bosh. Mm. They weren't the same team. When you're dealing with a generational or historically great player mm. and he leaves, the likelihood of your team continuing on that path in which you were on while he was there is not very good. Mm. So last year, Russ shot 66% from the free throw line. That ranked... 103 of 110 qualified free throw shooters. 103rd of 110? So which is better, 61% wow. or 66%? Because well, your guy's out 66-1%. I'm not sure that I would trust Russ that much more at the late game free throw line than I would trust Ben Simmons. Skip, your guy's not even in there on late game free throws because mm -hmm. they take him out. He became unplayable. Remember, that's what got Doc in trouble. That is fixable. And I think they said they hired a new shot. What kind of mechanic you got to fix that? Uh, like a Dr. Freud mechanic. That's what you huh? need. You need psychoanalysis. So you can go put just psychological. The form is great. The motion is true and pure. There's nothing wrong with his motion of his shot. Skip, if it was that easy, I mean, how many guys that we've seen that had these problems? David Duvall never got it fixed. Rick and Kill never got it fixed. Steve Sachs had to mm -hmm. retire. Chuck Knobloch retired. Mm -hmm. So it's not, I mean, people, you make it seem like it's just easy. Oh, man, he got a little mental block. He just fixed that and right back out there. You think it's that easy? Hell, if it was that easy, he just done did it. Once upon a time, not that long ago, 2017, Russ made 85% of his free throws. Right. Now he's plummeted all the way to 66, and that was two of the last three years of 66. He's got the demons in his head, too. So me, so he's going up there saying, uh-oh, not again. So let me ask you this. So let's just say for the sake of argument, he go do he, he does speak to a sports psychologist. Mm. You think Ben Simmons shooting 85% one season from the free throw line? He's got the capability of it. Skip, I got the capability to walk from here to Miami. That don't mean I can do it. I like the stroke. It's all in his head. Skip. I, I've seen the videos of him just draining threes in practice. Obviously, there's no nobody guarding him. I've seen Dwight Howard in practice draining threes. What does I, that I mean? I haven't, actually. I have. I haven't seen him drain threes. Drain them. I've seen him make one. I've seen JaVale McGee shoot threes. Okay. I, Skip, these, come on, man. Come on, you man. You know good well. Skip, I, Skip, see, I think the thing is, look, I'm not saying Ben Simmons is okay, not a he, talent. Okay. You, you're trying to defend Russ because you're stuck with him. Those get what was to defend? The numbers are what they are. They're solo act numbers because they don't contribute to winning championships. Okay, Skip, how does that, if I'm playing five on four, how does that help me on the offensive end when they leave him uncovered? And if he passing up layups, he, pa he passed up a dunk on a 6-1, to pass it to a guy that's six eight that's double covered. What do you always say about Deion Sanders? He can just take half the field away and just yes. say, "I got this." Yes. So can he? He just says, "Trey Young, seriously, I, he'll he'll be no factor." He but, but Skip, he was a factor. He averaged twenty nine eleven. Mm. What? Yeah, so, but he was shooting like thirty percent. All I know is that his team, which was a lower seed, beat the higher team mm -hmm. with two better players on that team. Right? You would say Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid are better than any player or any one, two yep. players that are on the uh, uh, Hawks, they right? They should have won. They were in commanding position to win and what again happened? and again and, what and again. Happened? Something was wrong with the basketball team. It's troubled internally, and I don't know why. Maybe it's Ben versus Joel clashing internally, 
but it what sounds do like Russ? they can make peace. They can't do it. No, 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 no. Stop that. Well, you can't, you, you can't attain the one seed without somehow coexisting. It worked through so the Let me ask you a question. Russ has never been a one seed? A one seed? Yeah, he's I never don't been. know. With Kevin, I, were right. there a couple of times? So do you, oh, so you believe you believe Ben Simmons could be a one seed without Joel Embiid? Is that what you're telling me? Uh, all I know is I have it from somebody way up high in the organization, this was about two years ago, yeah. that they had decided for the long haul that Ben would be more valuable than Joel. And I said, and then, man, I find that hard to believe because I'm a Joel fan. And but I hope that's what that organization view. That's how they view him because the intangible, the, the subtleties of his game are so high, you can't find them. It's why he made three straight all-star teams, rookie of the year, and two first-team all-defenses. It's you, you can't that doesn't grow on Southern California palm trees. Subtlety, subplot, mm -hmm. subtitles. Mm -hmm. He's not better than Joel Embiid. Well, I, I, I'm going to agree with you on that, but he's better than Russell Westbrook. No, he's not. I, you know, if I could right now magically transform your team and put Ben Simmons at the point, you'd be much better. No, we wouldn't. Yes, you would. Skip, we got Skip. How, how are you going to overcome this this whirling dervish that that needs to, to record triple doubles for his own ego's sake? Well, I ask you the same question. How are you going to overcome a guy that won't shoot the ball outside of the paint? The guy that shot one shot in the final six games in the fourth quarter. How are you going to overcome that? Boy, I, I don't know how they did this. They were the one seed with that. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. No, no, so that was before they got to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. They were the one seed in the regular season. Yeah, mm -hmm. they won the most games. They were the one seed. Come playoff time, your guy, the 28th best player in the NBA, had one shot mm -hmm. in the fourth quarter over the last six games. Mm-hmm. One shot in the last six games. Mm. Russell Westbrook routinely right, shoots you right out of the gym in the we playoffs. Your guy can't shoot you in the gym. Mm. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show. And be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed. Or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.